MaumeeTitle.com. Maumee Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy an ice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273 and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. Who couldn't use an extra 3000 or 2000 mm, Okay, how about 1000 or even 500 Those are the top four prizes in the most recent Tenora Athletic Boosters fundraiser. Tickets are $10 each or 6 for 50 Get a ticket at any Tenora home game. Just visit a booster member or go to our Facebook page at Tenora Athletic Boosters. The drawing will be held after 2,000 tickets are sold for a spring sports drawing. The Athletic Boosters is a nonprofit organization that supports the Tenora athletes, coaches, and athletic facilities. The Boosters' support is shown many ways, including volunteering time, raising money, and contributing funds to better enhance the Rams' teams or organization's performance. Yearly and lifetime memberships are available. That's the Tenora Rams Athletic Boosters, who are a proud sponsor of Tenora Sports, and Tenora Rams Live. Are you tired of losing money on your 401k or other retirement accounts? Well, you're not alone. Do what many area residents have done and call Postoma Insurance and Investments. With safe money strategies offered to you by PI&I, you can still have the benefits of market earnings without the risk of taking market loss. Sound too good to be true? Give us a call and with experienced agents at PI&I will work with you to understand how you can do just that. If you're more interested in the CD-style accounts but are fed up with low CD rates, PI&I agents can set you up with an account with rates currently as high as 5.5% fixed with certain restrictions apply. Call us today at 419-782-2500 to help you set up a plan that meets your investment goals. That's 782-2500, Postuma Insurance and Investments, protecting everything you've worked for. Welcome in to the Division Three Region 10 Regional Finals. Coming up here from Jack Hewitt Field in Resiris, it's the Tenora Lady Rams taking on the Johnstown Johnnies. Tenora was the number three seed coming out of the Northwest Three Division Three District, while the Lady Rams defeated Swatton in the sectional finals by a score of six nothing. Then defeated Springfield, or, or, or moved on to Springfield, where they knocked off the number one seed, the Oak Harbor Rockets, by a score of nine to eight in that uh, extra running thriller. Then defeated the number two seed, the Eastwood Eagles, fourteen to four, to get here to regionals. And then the semifinal here in regionals, Tenora defeated Oak Harbor by a score of three to nothing. Johnstown comes in from the Central 2 district where they were the number one seed overall. The Johnnies defeated Grandview Heights 26-0 in the sectional finals. Then in the district finals, defeated Amanda Clear Creek by a score of 10-0. In the district finals, Johnstown edged Howard East Knox 1-0. Then on Wednesday here, Johnnies faced familiar to the Tenora uh, School District and the Tenora athletes, the Fairview Lady Apaches. And Johnstown defeated Fairview 4-0 to get this matchup here versus another GMC team, the Tenora Lady Rams. Tenora comes in at 20-7. They represent the GMC, the Green Medals Conference, while the 26-2 Johnstown Johnnies, Johnnies come in from the Licking County League. They were the Cardinal League champs. They were 13-1 in their conference. Welcome to the Signs Excavating pregame show. Signs Excavating... First pitch is set for 12 p.m. Signs Excavating can assist with your general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch cleaning to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist. Signs Excavating team is committed to doing the job right on schedule and within budget. Based in rural defiance, Signs Excavating serves all of Northwest Ohio, providing reliable and affordable excavating services for your home business and industrial property. Signs Excavating Team offers many excavating services, including stone hauling, trenching, demolition, land clearing, and drainage work. Signs Excavating is the official pregame sponsor of the Tour Rams Live Spring Sports Season. For all your excavating needs, call Josh, 419-769-2290. For your heavy hauling and trucking needs, get a hold of Brad, 419-481-3738. 
visit them on Facebook or go to ScienceExcavating.com. Rams come in with a 20 and 7 overall record. Later Rams finished second in the GMC with a 6-1 record. That was one game behind champion Fairview, who was also here in the regionals, which you said earlier. That's Good who afternoon, ladies the, and gentlemen, and welcome to the Johnstown Johnnies defeated OHSA the Fairview Apaches to make it here versus Sonora. Final game, Rams took home the district Cyrus. title a season Today's ago, beating Not Seago 2-1. Sonora, Sonora was beaten in the Sweet 16 the last Downs. season by the Cardington Lincoln Pirates. Rams graduated just one from last season. That was Quinn Horn, and also the loss of Devonna Holmes has hurt the offense a bit this season as well. In a circle for the Lady Rams is Skyly Zolman. Zolman was last year's GMC Player of the Year and the Crescent News Player of the Year as well. This season, she is 17-5 and five with an ERA of 1.09. Skyly's pitched 154 in the third inning. She struck out 232 batters, allowed 79 hits, and walked 65. At the plate for Tenora, Senior Anna Frazier is hitting 505 with 30 stolen bases. Logan McQuillan is hitting 495 with three home runs and 36 runs batted in. Freshman Paige Gamby been on fire lately. Paige coming in, hitting 427 with seven homers and 29 RBI. Zoe Rostai. Sophomore is hitting 310 with four homers and 15 runs batted in. Paige Carpenter, 386 with two homers and 28 runs batted in. Looking at the Johnstown Johnnies, Eddie Triplett was the player of the year. Hit 518 with 10 homers and 36 RBIs. Dakota Staffen, 12 home runs and 40 RBIs. She batting 488. AC Walters, seven home runs, 30 runs batted in. And... She's batting at 420. Johnny's as a team are hitting 365. They're averaging eight and a half runs a contest, giving up just over one and a half. They have 33 home runs as a team. In the circle for the Johnny's, Macy Walters comes in at 15 and two with an ERA of .91. She's pitched 115 innings, struck out 212, walked just 25, and has allowed just 58 hits. First team all conference for the Johnnies in the Licking County League. First team was Dakota Stephen, Addie Triplett, Macy Walters, and Eleni Zach. Second team members were Aubrey Del Cicado, Kayla Fain, Peyton Mitchell, and Emily Yangzura. Honorable mention was Ava Peterman. Player of the year was Macy Walters. Coach of the year was Mike Justice. Johnstown, you wonder where they're from. They're a little bit northeast of Columbus. Head coach is Mike Justice, assisted by Joe Horvath, Aaron Queen, Audrey Beverly, and Colton Beverly. Superintendent is Philip Wagner. High school principal is Derek Busenberg. Athletic director is Robbie Brickner. Athletic secretary is Mindy Jackson. They are Division Three, 213 boys, 185 girls. Official scorekeeper is Tommy Williams. As we said, they're from the Licking County League. Colors are white, red, and gray. Rams are coached by head coach Tony Fairchild. Second season for Coach Fairchild, 39-11. and 11. He was a 2022 Crescent News Coach of the Year. Assisted by Brian Schaffner, Brooklyn Barshowitz, and Vince Salinas. Superintendent at Northeastern Local Schools is Nicole Wells. Principal is Alex Nafziger. Athletic Director, Mr. Craig Rutter. Trainer is Emily Volmar. Lady Rams colors are Hunter Green and White, and they are from the GMC, the Green Medals Conference. So wherever you are, however you may be listening or watching, Thanks for tuning in to this afternoon's Division Three Regional 10 final here. Coming up live here from Jack Hewitt Field in Bucyrus, Ohio. See Lady Rams taking on the Johnstown Johnnies. The winner will advance to the state final four, and they will play in the state semifinals on Thursday at 10 a.m. in Akron, Ohio. Broadcast studio is brought to you by the Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. In-game scoreboard brought to you by Drop Zone Pizzeria and Striker and Ayersville. Pre-game brought to you by Signs Excavating, your video sponsor, as always, Batten Stevens. Body Shop in Jewel, Ohio. Nothing but the best from Batten Stevens. Stats brought to you by BSN Sports and Mr. Jim Gears. Post-game brought to you by Mr. Tim Bidlack at the Bidlack Insurance and investments, your player of the game in the Rams victory, brought to you by Higby Embroidery. Uniforms Rams going with the Hunter Greens tonight with the black bottoms, where Johnstown is in the home whites with the navy blue lettering and numbering with the red trim and the red pants. David Frank weather temperature here today was 73 degrees here. We'll turn things over to the PA announcer here. And then me and Kaylee will be back right after this. Our Steve Hartman. 
Eric Steinhelfer, Edwin Roberts, and Dan Hodes. Now let's meet today's teams. First for the visiting Johnstown Johnnies. Today's subs are Ava Peterman, Brooklyn Siegel, Jenna Hokendahl, Madison Holbrook, Cameron Bollinger, and Madison Fraley. Today's starters for Johnstown Johnnies are number 10, Aubrey Del Cicado. Number five, Macy Walt Waiters. No <laughs> Number 22, Dakota Stephen. Number seven, Addie Triplett. Number nine, Lene Zach. Number four, Addie Zach. Number seven, Emily Yanzura. Number 12, Peyton, <laughs> Michelle. Number 33, Michaela Fain. <coughs> and number 16, Kate Blackburn. The coaches for Johnstown are head coach Mike Justice, assistant coach Joe Horvath, assistant coach Aaron Queen, assistant coach Andrea Beverly, and student assistant Colton Beverly. Now for the lineup for Tenora. The subs tonight are number 21, Devona Holmes. Number four, Trinity Corber. Number three, Kylie Lucas. Number 15, Christina Meyer. And number five, Mallory Zachrick. Starting for Tenora tonight is gonna to be number one, Anna Fraser. Number 22, Marin Pittman. Number nine, Logan McQuillan. Number 12, Paige Gamby. Number two, Paige Carpenter. Number 34, Zoe Rasty. Number 24, Skyla Zolman, number 10, Tiga Norden, and number 8, Mickey Starkey, and also number 20, Tanae Smith. The coaches for Tenora are Tony Fairchild, with assistant coaches Allie Fairland, Vince Salinas, Brian Schaffner, and Brooklyn Barkwitz. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise, remove your caps, and join us as we honor America and those who have served to protect it with the playing of the national anthem. playing of our national anthem. Again, welcome to today's event. It's run down the, the well, I guess we really don't need to run down the starting line those because you, those abusive language the, what's and just heard it, so. And unwelcome. Let's afford for just the second time, Lady Rams playing for a trip to the, to the final four. Last appearance was in 2018 where they made it to Akron, so 
Welcome everybody in. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Keith Brown, Kaylee Runk with you on this Saturday afternoon from beautiful Bucyrus, Ohio here at Jack Hewitt Field. A little warmer than it was the last time we left, Kaylee. I definitely don't need a blanket or a sweatshirt this time. <laughs> when we left here on Wednesday, it was about 64 degrees. We started at about 78. And what makes the day Skyly with the, hey, I wouldn't dig it if I were you pitch just to, you know, throw them off a bit there. <laughs> it went just a bit wide. <laughs> so the Rams coming in at 20 and 7. And the Johnstown Johnnies, 26 and 2. Skyly Zolman will be on the mound for the Lady Rams. Skyly, 17 and 5, ERA of 1.09, 154 in the third innings. Pitched in 26 games, she started 22. She's allowed 79 hits, 51 runs, 24 earned runs. Walked 65 and struck out 232 last year, being the play of the year in the Crescent News and in GMC. Skyly was 18 and two. Struck out 226 and 125 innings. Defensively, Paige Gamby behind the plate. Paige Carpenter at first. Welcome McQuillan at second. Tegan Norton at short. Tanae Smith at third. Outfield. Zoe Ross die in left, Anna Frazier in center, and Marin Pittman is in right. Mickey Starkey will be hitting right. for Tanae Smith. Johnstown is number 10, Aubrey Del Cicado. Thanks for joining us. Trip to the final four is at stake here in the Region 10 final. Aubrey Del Cicato steps in. She was the second team all conference, 349. First pitch, bonded foul, third base side, just outside the bag. Run her way here. 1155, first pitch. Learn a couple minutes early. 349. Strike one to count. No homers, 13 yard base, 15 steals for Del Cicato. She bats from the left side for those of you listening on radio. Checks wings, fouled back. See, Kaylee Shane didn't even flinch. And he's no. <laughs> Shane from the Crescent News here does a fantastic job. Check out his articles. Weekly in the Crescent News. Zolma's pitch, 0 2 pitch, check swing, just a bit high. One ball and two strikes. Zolman in the circle. One, two pitches high off the glove. Uh, Paige Gammy back here to us. Hi, Paige. Two balls and two strikes. Two balls and two strikes. Zolman's 2 2 pitch coming. Fouled off. I learned my lesson this time. I parked <laughs> I was just further ask. out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many foul balls went that way on Wednesday. It had to bend 20. I said, I think I heard at least three, at least three cars get hit. 2-2 <laughs> two, two pitch coming. Slap third base side. Tanae Smith up with it. Throw across. In time. Nice play by Tanae Smith at third. 5-3 on the putout for the first out. Uh, that was one thing about Wednesday. The Rams were Walter. just fantastic in the field. Oh, Logan at times made it a, a little adventurous out there, but they did not commit an error until the seventh inning. And that's the key to limit the opportunities. AC Walters, player of the year, steps in. 427 homers, 30 RBIs, and four steals for Macy Walters. She'll be on the mound. First pitch swinging. High fly ball behind us. Foul. At least we're in the sun, Kaylee. The equipment's kind of in the uh, or in the, in the shade. The equipment's in the sun. We're in the shade. <laughs> oh, one pitch, low. It slipped out of the hands of Skyly. One ball, one strike. Just underway here at Jack Hewitt Field. No score. Top of the first inning. Rams are the home team. <laughs> one, one, one pitch. Ground ball to Tanae Smith. She bobbles it, picks it up. Long throw in over the head of Carpenter. Down the right field line it goes. Pittman up with it, throws it back in, but not before Walters is on at second. So we just talked about. It's going to be air on Tanae Smith at third, putting Walters at second. What do you say, D? What do you say, dudes? Smith bobbled it. 
and tried to make up for it by rifling it over to first base. Throw was high off the glove of Carpenter, and it went down the right field line before Marin Pittman could scoop it up and fire it back in. So Walters is the second with one out. Dakota Stafen, the number three hitter, playing at third base, steps in. 488 for Stafen. All-speed pitch, nailed it by Skyler. 12 homers, 40 RBIs for Stephen. She was first team all-conference in the Licking County League. Pitch is inside off the glove of Gamby. Down to third to throw just ahead of the slide as Walters. That's one of those things where today has to be in the right position for that throw. She was kind of off, a little too far off the base, so once she made that catch, not able to make that tag. So a runner at third now with one out, Macy Walders down there. Dakota Stafen at the plate, pitched to her, is inside, two balls and a strike. To hear echo in the background, that's uh, Mr. Mike Mag down the other way. We'll try to limit as much as we can. Pitch tapped into left field for a base hit. That's an RBI by Stafen. Scoring was Walters to give Johnstown a one nothing lead. So an RBI by Stafen on the single. That is number seven, Addie Triplett. Addie Triplett steps in for another first teamer. 518 for Triplett, 10 homers, 36 RBIs, and 13 stolen bases. Runner at first, one out. Pitch over the head of Aquila, and that's going to go to the right field gap. Pittman over there cuts it off, but not before. Stephen goes all the way to third, and Addie Triplett is on with the second straight single. Number five hitter, the center fielder, Laney Zach, steps in another first team all conference. 383 homers, 22 RBIs, and 13 steals. Timeout as the Rams infield. Going to head out there and have a conversation. So one nothing. Runners at the corners for Johnstown. Here, echo in here, Taylor. <laughs> I'm trying not even to talk that loud. So Zach, Laney Zach, Eddie Zach on deck. Laney Zach steps in. Perfect opportunity to increase the one nothing lead. Zolman's pitch. Zach scores on the bunt. bunt or the ball gets behind Gamby, not far enough. Kind of got stuck behind the umpire, yeah, the um, like in between the umpire's The umpire feet. tried to get out of the way, and he kind of kicked it a bit, but Page found it. Runner went down to second, though, on the pitch. Tap foul, third base side. One ball, one strike, one out here. Johnstown already leading 1-0, has runners at second and third with one out with Laney Zach at the plate with a 1-1 count. Zolman's 1-1. Line shot foul down the right field line. Johnstown defeated Fairview 4-0 on Wednesday to get here. They played at the game, the 2 o'clock game before the Lady Rams took the field. And... Macy Walters limited his Fairview attack to just one hit, so Rams can't fall behind too much here today. That pitch is high. Two balls and two strikes. One out. Runners at second and third here in the top of the first inning. Here from Cyrus. 2-2 pitch. Blooper right field side foul. Pittman and Carpenter give chase right in the middle of both of them. Neither of them really had a chance. Nice effort, though, by both ladies. <laughs> Laney Zach at the plate. Addy Zach on deck. 2 2 count coming. Low ball three. Skyly's already allowed more hits in the first inning than she did all of Wednesday, where she allowed just one hit. Full count pitch coming to Laney Zach. Fly ball in the foul territory. Pittman goes over, makes the catch, throws it home. Not in time as the runner from third, Dakota Stephen, tags up. Pittman went over there in foul territory, made the play, retiring Zach for the second out. Got an RBI on that, increasing the Johnstown lead to 2 nothing. Going down to third on the throw in was Addie Triplett. Eddie Zach steps in. 350 for Zach. Four homers, or four RBIs and two stolen bases. First pitch to Zach. 
There's a ball. Smith way in at third base for the Lady Rams. 1-0 pitch coming to Addy Zach. There's ball two. Two balls. No strikes. Two nothing in favor of Johnstown. There's two outs. Skyly's 2-0 pitch inside corner. Strike one call. Two balls and a strike to the number six hitter, Addy Zach. Yank Zero on deck for Johnstown. 2-1 pitch. Ground ball, third base side foul. Tanae Smith scoops it up in foul territory. Right in front of Coach Mike Justice over there, who was also the Coach of the Year in the Licking County League. Lots of first-teamers and second-teamers all the way down the lineup for Johnstown. 2-2 two -two pitch from Zolman. Drilled to left field over the head of Rostai. Scoring his triplet. And down to second is Addie Zach with a double. She got an RBI on that play as well. 3-0 Johnstown on top. And just as we said, to start the game, Rams defense could ill afford to take a vacation today and let alone not an error. It's one of those plays you see Zoe make out there in left field. So Yang Zero steps in, 318 with 15 runs batted in for her. Runner a second, two outs for Johnstown. They have put three on the board. I bought the highest rated bat. Three hits, another meeting. The infield. So not to start the Lady Rams and the coaching staff had wanted, Kaylee, by any means. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Summing up in one word. I there we go. I get, I, the, I don't know. These, it makes me nervous at this point because then they start getting down on themselves a little bit and it, which, sometimes which, it gets hard for them to get out yes. of it. But. Which we saw Lady Rams fall behind 5-0 yeah. to Oak Harbor, who was the number one seed yeah, so. up at uh, Holland. So the Lady Rams have rallied before. Outside just misses. Oh, he does call it a strike. Cut the outside corner. One ball and one strike to Emily Yang Zero. She's a number seven hitter. She'll be at first base defensively. Pitch inside. Two balls and a strike. Runner at second. Addy Zach. Two one pitch. Strike two called. Two balls and two strikes. Two outs runner a second. Johnstown with three so far here in the first lead. Three nothing. Rams have their chance here in the bottom of the first inning against Macy Walters. Pitches in the dirt behind. Gamby down to third base is Addy Zach. So Zach moves up on another ball in the dirt. Gets behind Gamby. Payoff pitch coming. 3-2 pitch. Ground ball. Second base side. Logan McClellan up with it. Fires over to Carpenter. 4-3 on the putout to win the inning. So Johnstown sends seven to the plate in the first inning. They score three runs on three hits. I think two errors for the Rams and one left on base after a half inning here on your drop zone pizza. It's Rhea scoreboard. It is Johnstown three and the Tenor Rams nothing. We'll be back right after this on your drop zone pizza. Rhea scoreboard. The Adam Stevens Body Shop is your number one voted auto collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. We have recently built a brand new state-of-the-art 20,000 square foot body shop along with a 2,500 square foot addition to our paint shop. This includes a brand new eco-friendly paint booth that is top of the line. At Bat and Stevens, we use the latest and newest technology the industry has to offer. We are your experts on all makes and models of vehicles and are the only Chrysler, Ford, and GM certified collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. Give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate or stop by and visit us in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Matt and Stevens Body Shop would like to wish all teams good luck this season. Back here at Jack Hewitt Field here in Bucyrus, Lady Rams have a little bit of work to do. They trail 3-0. They're going to send Anna Frazier, Baron Pittman, Logan McQuillan, your first three hitters to face Macy Walters. Walters 15-2. She'd appeared in 20 games, 115 innings pitch, 58 hits allowed, 24 runs, 15 earned runs. ERA is 0.91. 
She's walked just 25 batters in those 115 innings pitch, and she struck out 212, and she is headed to the University of Akron in the fall. Waller's on the mound, Addie Zach behind the plate, Emily Yang Zura at first, Aubrey Del Sacato at second, Addie Triplett at short, Dakota Stephen is at third. Peyton Michelle is in left, Laney Zach in center, and Katie Blackburn will be in right field for the Johnstown Johnnies. And we said they came in at 16 and two, Zora 20 and seven. Lady Rands finished second in the conference to Fairview, who the Johnnies defeated on Wednesday to get here. Frazier steps in, Anna, Rams center fielder, 5.05. Has eight runs batted in with 30 stolen bases. So Anna, it's kind of the gas that makes the engine run for the Lady Rams, Kaylee. Yeah, hopefully she can get on there and do do what she's best at and get us a get us a run off the at the beginning here. Anna Frazier. Anna, a little slap hitter, but she gets on base <laughs> as we've seen all season. She can make things happen. What she did in her first at bat on Wednesday. And a bunt single, and the infield fell asleep for Huron, and she just went down to second base. First pitch from Walters is outside. Ball one. Bottom of the second inning. Thanks for joining us here on Snow Rams Live. Keith Brown, Kaylee Rick with you on this Saturday afternoon, 3 0 Johnstown. The Johnny's early lead. Second pitch, outside corner, strike one call. One ball, one strike to Hannah. Base is empty. Nobody out for the Rams here in the bottom of the first. Pitch is up and away to Anna Frazier. On deck is Aaron Pittman. As we said, in the districts, Lady Rams fell behind 5 nothing. The Wolk Harbor, they were basically lifeless. Yeah, I can. Uh, I don't think I could take that again. <laughs> <laughs> Frazier bunts at third base side. Stephen up with it, fires, but not in time. Infield single for Anna Frazier. Perfectly placed bunt down the third, third baseline. Stephen was already in. Dakota came in, picked it up, and fired over to first base. She had no chance to get Frazier. 30 stolen bases for Frazier on the season. Aaron Pittman steps in, right fielder with a 250 average. No homers and 16 runs batted in. Walder's pitch. Pittman tries to bunt, swings through it, or has to bunch through it. It's strike one as Frazier scampers quickly back to first base. Oh, one pitch to Pittman, squares around the bun again, bunts it in the air, back to us. It's a very top of the fence, so Marin's down on the count, no balls and two strikes. Coach Fairchild always coaching down there at third. Logan McQuillan is on deck for the Lady Rams. Frazier at first, nobody out, 0-2 pitch coming from Walters to Pittman. Swung on and missed. Pittman goes down swinging for the first out. Bring up the Rams senior second baseman, Logan McQuillan. Logan, 495 with three homers and 36 runs batted in to lead the Rams. She was first team all GMC, as was Anna Frazier, who's at first base. A little soft fly ball right back to the pitcher. Walters off the mound, snagged it to retire McQuillan. One unassisted for out number two. Frazier didn't really get off too far, had to dive back in, out of the throw. Rams freshman sensation Paige Gamby, Gamby behind the plate. This is in the batter's box. First pitch, tap foul, first base side. For Paige, 427, seven homers and 29 RBIs. And Kaylee, she had a, she's had a heck of a, heck of a last three weeks. She has. She can just keep it going. <laughs> Definitely going to need it today. <laughs> oh, one pitch coming from Walters to Gamby. Swung on high fly ball back I mean, in the parking lot. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> there it went. Didn't hear a crash, though. <laughs> so Walters ahead of Gamby. No balls and two strikes. Skyly threw 31 pitches in that first inning. 
0-2 pitch coming to Gamby. Outside, just missed the outside corner. One ball and two strikes to the Rams freshman catcher, Paige Gamby. I think it was a basketball season for Paige as well on the JV level. Paige Carpenter on deck for the Lady Rams. 1-2 pitch from Walters. Fly ball into to the gap in left center field. Goes all the way to the wall. Frazier hits second. She's going to score. Gamby in with a stand-up double. Lady Rams have cut the deficit to 3-1. to one. Gamby with a gapper in left center field. Number two, Paige Carpenter. So Paige with an RBI. Coming up, Paige Carpenter. 386 for Carpenter. Two homers, 28 runs batted in. And Paige also capable of hitting one deep. Walters pitch to Carpenter. Third base side, ground ball. Stafen up with it. Throws across, throws off the bag. Yang Zura comes off to put it away. 5-3 on the put out in the inning. Rams get the run. And they do so with two hits. No errors and one left on. After one inning of play. One, one, he was wrong one. After one inning of play here at Jack Hewitt Field in Bucyrus, it is the John Towns Johnny's three, and it's North Lady Rams one. We'll be back after this on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Clubhouse Pizza in A is your small town alternative for happy food at a happy place. Featuring one of the area's best pizzas, Clubhouse Pizza in A will not disappoint. Wing Wednesdays, buffets on Thursday, happy hour on Friday. That's just a few of the things Clubhouse Pizza in A has for specials. Stop out after the game for amazing food, great drinks, and an awesome atmosphere. Hours of operation are Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Or order some takeout at 419-658-2720. Come by for a visit at 210 East Main Street in Nay, or check them out on Facebook at Clubhouse Pizza Nay. Rachel and Jason Gilliam and the great staff at Clubhouse Pizza Nay are proud supporters of the Rams. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Back here, top of the second we go. Keith Brown, Kaylee Runk with you on this Saturday here from Bucyrus's Jack Hewitt Field. Three in the first for the Johnnies, one in the bottom of the first for the Lady Rams. 3 1 as we head to the top of the second inning. For Johnstown, they're going to send 8 9 and then the top. Is number 12, Peyton Michelle. Michelle, Fane, and then the top, Del Cicado to face. Skyly's own little off speed pitch there by Skyly. Strike called. Skyly has that little off speed pitch that's just very deceptive. <laughs> Swung on and missed. Strike two on Peyton Michelle. 278, 13 RBIs, and six steals for the left fielder. Strike three call. Michelle goes down for the first strike out for Skyly in the first out here in the second inning. Michaela Fain, the designated player. She's hitting for the right fielder, Katie Blackburn. 278. As well for Fain. Step in. First pitch to hers. Tap right back to Skyly. Fires it over to Carpenter in time. 1-3 on the putout for out number two. Top of the lineup. Every Aubrey Del Cicado. Uh, Tanae Smith to start the game. So Del Cicado, so she was second team all league. Not too many two that aren't all league in the Johnstown lineup. Squares her on the bunt. A little bit low. Gets away from Gamby. Bases are empty, though, so no harm. One ball and no strikes to the leadoff hitter, Del Cicado. Bases empty. Two outs here. Top of the second. 3-1. Johnny's on top of the Lady Rams. Line shot. Just before the third base dugout. Lady Rams in the third base dugout. Johnny's in the first base side. Tenora's the home team. I don't think it really goes by seed. I'm not really sure how they determine... I was kind of questioning that the other yeah, day, the too. Home and away, like, this really at this sure. point. Strike two on the outside corner. One ball and two strikes to Del Cicado. AC Walters on deck. I was questioning how it works. I think this is the first time, even going into, like, with districts and stuff, that we've been home. It is. <laughs> outside. Two balls and two strikes. 
to Del Sicario. Yeah, Lady Rams outside of these sectionals have basically been the visiting team all the way through, I believe. It's been doing us good. Maybe we should have been visiting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no need to change anything. 2-2 two, two is outside. Three balls and two strikes to Del Sicado. Payoff pitch coming. 3-2 pitch from Skyly. Line shot on the line. Ooh, I guess it wasn't on the line. Third base umpire says foul ball. Thought I saw some white hit there. But the umpire, I think, was trying to get out of the way. Coach Justice down there is like, uh, I think I hit right here, fella. <laughs> it went, smile on his, his face. Legs. Yes, it did. <laughs> So 3-2 pitch coming again to Del Cicado. Just missed the outside corner. Del Cicado with a two-out walk. Down the first base she goes. Number five, Macy Walters. Macy Walters started the whole mess in the first inning as he reached on an error. And then went to second on the throwing error. So basically two errors on the same play for the Lady Rams. Pitch. There's that all-speed pitch by Skyly. Strike called. Walter was the player of the year in the Licking County League. 420 on the season with seven home runs and 30 runs batted in. There goes the runner. Gamby's throw down to second base. Not in time. Throw gets away from Norton. But a stolen base by Del Cicado. She stays at second. Ball didn't go too far from Norton. So runner in scoring position for Johnstown. They already lead 3-1. They bat here in the top of the second inning. There is two outs. Swung on and miss. One ball and two strikes to Macy Walters. Skyley's 1-2 pitch to Walters. Swung on and missed. Down goes Walters. Second strikeout for Skyley. That's the third out in the inning for the Johnnies. They threaten. They do not score. No runs for Johnstown. They get one hit. No leader Ram errors and one left on base. Headed to the bottom of the second here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. It is Johnstown 3 and the Tenor Lady Rams 1. We'll be back right after this quick time out. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun of Defiance has been serving Northwest Ohio for over 30 years. Need cash? Collateral pawn loans are available. Stop in and see Shar and the staff at 5727 State Route 66 North in Defiance, Ohio. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun carries a full line of new and pre-owned items that include firearms, ammo, optics, game systems, knives, jewelry, and Amish Poly furniture. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun has in-house jewelry as well as a gunsmith on site. Hours of operation are Monday 10 to 7, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 5, and Saturday 9 to 3. Got questions? Give them a call, 419-784-9880, or visit them online at woodenindianpawn.com, or visit their Facebook page. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun, your locally owned pawn specialists. Say, go Rams. Bottom of the second inning we go. Batting first for tonight. For the Lady Rams. Six, seven, and eight. Ross dies Zolman and Norton to bat against Macy Walters. So our bats are definitely important. We, I feel like last game on Wednesday, we did a lot of watching of the strike zone. we got to make sure they're swinging the bats. Yes. Kaylee said there's not going to be too much uh, analysis today. I'm focused in. One word answers. <laughs> so there you go. She, a, little, a, little bit, a little bit of <laughs> extra analysis there. <laughs> Ground ball back to Walder, scoops it up, fires over to first base, retiring Zoe Rostai for the first out. 1-3 on the put out, bring up Skyly Zolman. Skyly first team all conference, 256, seven homers and 19 RBIs. Most of Skyly's offensive damage has been done in the postseason. Swung on and missed, nice off speed by Walters and Skyly. Kind of got the Rams postseason kick started when they were trailing five nothing in the districts. In the semifinals, hit a three or a two run homer when they were down five nothing, which kind of lit a fire underneath the Lady Rams. Check swing, pitches outside, one ball and one strike, one out. Base is empty here in the top of, or the bottom of the second. It's three one Johnny's. Winner goes to Akron in the state final four. They'll play at ten o'clock on Thursday. 1-1 pitch. Nice off-speed pitch. That one stayed a little bit high by Walters. Said Walters going to the University of Akron. 
So congratulations to Macy. 2-1 pitch coming to Skyly. Skyly drives it deep. Just a long ways foul. Down by the concession stands for the football field. Tell to Skyly, two balls and two strikes. The junior jumps back in the batter's box. Skyly bats from the right side. Coach B coaching at first as always, and Coach Fairchild coaching down at third. 2-2 two -two pinch from Walters coming to Skyly. Off-speed pitch, didn't hit, foul, way foul. Yeah, easily, that was, that a, was fair. <laughs> that was an off-speed pitch even on there, so Skyly kept up with. Uh, I think after that first pitch, that look Tony gave her. Yes. <laughs> was like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Walters looks at the wristband, gets a 2-2 pitch. Here it comes to Zulman. Outside corner, strike three called. Skyly goes down looking for the second out. That's the second strikeout for Walters. Next up to bat is number 10, Tegan Norton. 20 pitches for Walters, 14 strikes. Tegan Norton, the Ram shortstop, 203 on the season with three runs batted in. Pitch to Tegan, check swing. Pitch is a bit high. On deck is Mickey Starkey. 1-0 pitch. Tap just outside the bag at third. Down the left field line it goes. Long run by Pete and Michelle over there. Scoops it up. Fires it back into the infield. Top of the or top of the second. Bottom of the second. Lady Rams trail 3-1 to the Johnnies. Two outs. Base is empty. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Tegan Norton. Swung on and missed. All right, two. Tegan behind. One ball and two strikes. Walters just limited Fairview to one hit on Wednesday. Pitch is high and away. Two balls and two strikes. Go get her, five. Go get her now. Two, two. Two, Norton. One way. 2-2 pitch from Walters coming to Tegan Norton. 2-2 pitch. Fouled off first base side, out of play. Not quite as many foul balls normally as we have so far. <laughs> nice crowd here lined in the outfield. Bleachers are filled on both sides. 2-2 pitch coming from Walters to Tegan Norton. Swung on and miss. Strike three. Norton goes down. Second strikeout in the inning. Third overall for Walters for Tenora. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no runners left on base. Top of the third we go. Johnny's three. Lady Rams nothing. On your drop zone, Pizzeria scoreboard. We'll be back right after this. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Top of the third we go here at Bucyrus' Jack Hewitt Field on this sunny Saturday. Sunny and 73 on your David Schrock weather forecast. Three, four, and five. Dakota Staffen, Eddie Triplett, and Laney Zach, one of the two Zach, some of their sisters, that will bat here. Staffen singled and scored in the first and had an RBI. So Dakota, first team all conference, 488. First pitch to her is a ball. I can hear it. That's so distracting. <laughs> I just like Zolman brought a little heat. <laughs> pitch. Deep drive, right field. Pittman back. Oh, it's gone. Staffing with an opposite field home run. That's her 13th. On the season, she now has 41 RBIs as well. Johnny's with a 4-1 lead. Staffen, here we get a chance to get her stats in. 488 on the season, 12 homers and 40 RBIs before entering the batter's box. 
Triplet will step in. Addie. Addie, Triplet. Singleton scored in the first inning. 5-18 for Triplet. She had 10 homers and 36 RBIs. Also stole 13 bases. Strike one. Pitch coming up. Solomon's pitch. A little bit high. One ball and one strike. Pitch fouled off first base side. One ball, two strikes. Nobody out. Johnny's with a 4 1 lead. Pitch to Skyly fouled off first base side out of play. One ball and two strikes to Addy Triplet. Laney Zach and Addy Zach to follow. Skyly's one two change up fouled off again first base side. Out of play it goes. She's been throwing those change ups pretty yes, good. She today. has quite frequently, more than usual, I noticed. Pitch coming is just a bit inside. Two balls and two strikes. Solomon gets a pitch from Coach B. 2 2 pitch coming to Addie Triplet. Tap foul, third base side over there by Coach Justice. Today he says, I'll scoop it up for you, Coach. Actually, he's over here hostile. <laughs> it kind of went farther than what I thought. And it bounced off the yeah, dugout. <laughs> after it ricocheted off that brick dugout, it went all the way down the left field line. Base is empty. Nobody out here. 2 2 pitch coming to Addie Triplet. A little bit low. Count goes full. Three balls and two strikes. Kylie's got 46 pitches, 29 strikes here in the third inning. And the payoff pitch. Ground ball. Smith snagged it outside the line down there at third for a foul ball. He was right on the line. Have a bad angle here, but. They've been hit a lot over there, too. Yes, they time. have. High and away to the backstop. It goes off the, <laughs> off the little camera shade thingy. So that's a walk to Addie Triplet. She's down at first base. Going to bring up Laney Zach. Zach with the sacrifice fly in the first. Resulted in RBI. She's hitting 380 on the season with three homers and 22 runs batted in with 13 stolen bases. First pitch to her. Not quite yeah, sure if she cut that butt yeah, out there. Yeah, that oh, sends no, the ball, not. so she did not. I was waiting to see. Couldn't. I'm like directly behind. Right. <laughs> this one she bunts foul at the plate. Triplet jets for second. She's got a return. So Laney Zach steps back in. Triplet back to first base. Zach first team all conference as well. 4-1, Johnstown ahead of the Rams here at the top of the third. It's almost pitch, squared around the bunch. She bunched through the ball, Laney Zach does. One ball, one strike, nobody out. Staffing at first, or actually triple it at first, has 13 stolen bases. 1-2 pitch from Skyly, just misses high and away. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Two two pitch coming. Two Laney Zach. Inside ball three. Three balls and two strikes to Laney Zach. Zach in center field for the Johnnies. Full count pitched. Outside corner, strike three. Throw down to second base. Just ahead of the throw was triplet with the stolen base. So Zach is out swinging for the first out. Laney Zach, that is. Now Addie Zach will step in. She had a RBI double in the first. Yeah, we made that third a second. <laughs> I don't think Skyly was prepared for it. And she dropped. She dropped like instantly. 
It's got a smile on her face out there. <laughs> Paige almost took the top of her scalp off. 350 for Zach. She has four RBIs on the season. First pitch is a strike. <laughs> Runner a second, one out for Johnstown. They lead 4-1 here in the top of the third. Pitch. Swung on and miss. Strike two. Skyly quickly ahead of Addie's act. No balls and two strikes. Skyly's 0-2. Little blooper. Second base side. McQuillan out there. Stumbled on that lip again. And Logan drops the ball. So it'll be another error on the Lady Rams allowing... Next Triplet to go to third, and Zach is on it first. About the third or fourth miscue for the Lady Rams. Coach Fairchild asks for time. He's going to head out to the mound and have a conversation with his infield. I see. I think that ball came down and kind of hit Logan on like the, the wrist area. Plus, she was looking into the sun. I think as well. She kind of tripped on the. There's like a lip there. Lip. Going There's into the a outfield. deep lip, and she stumbled and lost her balance. Plus, she's looking into the sun. Well, that's a rough. <laughs> Very rough combination. Very rough. <laughs> and anybody that knows Logan, she's tough as nails. So it's going to take a, a major injury, which we don't want anybody to have a major injury. Just jokingly aside, that it's going to take something for major for Logan not to be out there in volleyball or softball. One of the more toughest competitors that uh, I've seen in boys and girls, any sports, in quite a few years. Gangzura steps in, grounded to McQuillan. There goes the runner down. Throw is in time. Unfortunately, Triplet scores on the throw down, so the Rams get the out at second on the stolen base. So she's caught for out two. And on the throw down by Gamby, Triplet scored. Second run of the inning for the fifth overall for the Johnnies. Pitches inside. One ball, one strike to Yang Zura. 3-18 on the season for Emily. That pitch is inside. Two balls and a strike to Yank Zura. Two one pitch. High and away. Three balls and a strike to Yank Zura. Five to one in favor of the Johnnies. And your fact run on a double steal. 3-1 pitch is high. Hank Zura down the first base on the walk, and Kaylee Skyly does not have the control she had on Wednesday. No. By any means. I mean, she was in the zone on Wednesday, did not allow a walk, and still have it so far here through. And it's kind of hard to tell if it's a lot of it. I mean, you get your pitch that you get called. and Right. Yep. I mean, she's not feeling that pitch. I mean, it's going to be a long night. Foul ball, first base side. Heard a little thud over there. <laughs> I've been waiting for one of those to hit that, green, that <laughs> greenhouse they got over there. Strike two. No ball, two strikes, two outs. Runner at first for Johnstown. They lead 5-1. Ding Zura is over there at first. A yeah, two-out walk. Pitch ground ball, second base side. McQuillan up with it. Throw over to Carpenter in time. 1-3 on the put out for the third out. Two more runs in the inning for Johnstown. Big home run by Staffen started it. They had, I think that was the only hit they had. Another Ram error. And one left on. Bottom of the third we go. Lady Rams with some work to do. They trail 5-1 here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. 
Signs Excavating of Defiance offers a variety of excavating and trucking services. Signs Excavating can assist with general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch cleaning to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist. Signs Trucking Service can also assist in any of your equipment hauling needs. They're located at 2147 State Route 66. Signs Excavating, family owned and operated since 1999. For any excavating needs, give Josh a call at 419-769-2290. And for your trucking needs, ring up Brad, 419 419- 9481-3738. Be sure to visit them online at signsexcavating.com or Signs Excavating on Facebook. Signs Excavating wishes all the best to the Tenora Rams athletes. Back here, Keith Brown, Kaylee Runk with you in the bottom of the third. Lady Rams trail 5-1, 9-1 and 2 to face Walters. Mickey Starkey, Anna Frazier, and Marin Pittman. First pitch to Starkey is high and away. Starkey, 267 with just two RBIs, basically start playing into the postseason for Coach Fairchild. That pitch is away as well. Two balls and a strike to Mickey Starkey, hitting for Tanae Smith. Rams of the team, 344. As their team average, they've hit 25 home runs this season. Swung on and missed. Count goes to two balls and two strikes. Later Rams as a team have 51 stolen bases, 30 of those by Anna Frazier. That one's fouled first base side out of play. Two two just misses a bit outside. There's a pitch foul back this way. Starkey staying alive. Just like the song. <laughs> I will say, like noticing tonight, they are swinging a lot more of those pitches instead of watching those strikes go by versus how they well, how they were on Wednesday. <laughs> yes. 3-2 from Walters. Hit first base side off the chest of Yank Zura. She recovers and steps on the bag, retiring Starkey. Three unassisted for the first out. Next up to bat is number one. Anna. Top of the lineup, Anna Frazier will step in. Hey, Matt. Anna, single and scored in the first inning. Hits it into right field for a solid base hit. Frazier with a one out single. Puts a runner on for the Lady Rams. Gonna bring up Marin Pittman. So Marin comes to the dish with runner at first and one out. Pitch by Walters. Swung on and miss. Strike one. Strike two called. I don't know if we lost our video signal or not. Right in the sun, I can't see. <laughs> we'll see if it. Pitch strike three call. Down goes Pippen for out number two. So Marin is caught looking. Is number nine, Logan McQuillan. So if we lost our video, I apologize. I can't actually see anything. And it just I looked up and it said you're offline. And I really have the best signal here to begin with. So I apologize for that if we were offline for a couple seconds. It's 5-1 here in the third inning. Drive in the gap in the right center field. All the way back. Gone. There's a ground rule double. There's a ground rule double. So Frazier will have to, what a break for Johnstown. I think Adam will have to go back to third. 
but she does. So Frazier's at third. McQuillan's at second on the two-out double. So, again, I apologize if we were offline. We can't see our, our computer or monitors just in the sun. Time out. Coach Judge is going to go out and talk to his starter, Macy Walters. Like I said, I just looked down and said, you're offline, which... I said we don't have the, the strongest of signal here, so we're trying to stay on. And plus, all of our equipment's in the sun. Sometimes I don't know. Kaylee says we're good, so we're back on. Three in the first for Johnstown. Two in the or yeah, two in the third, and home run by Dakota Staffen in the third. Rams with a run in the first. Now we have runners at second and third here with two outs. And Paige Gamby at the plate. We definitely need Paige right now. <laughs> well, that's why Coach uh, Justice went out there and had a conversation. Macy Walters. I guess the Rams freshman Paige Gamby pitches way outside. Ball one. Paige Carpenter on deck. One swing of the bat. Gamby can put the Lady Rams right back in the thing. Which I think is what the trip was for by Coach Justice. Change up, just got a piece of it fouled back here to us. So everybody that was watching, hopefully you rejoined and, and got our signal. Sorry for that, it's nothing we can do. It just goes out. <laughs> Electronics is great when it works. When it doesn't work, not so great. 1-1 <laughs> one, one pitch coming to Gamby. Runners at second and third. High fly ball, center field, falls in. That's going to score two. Gamby with a bloop single in the center field, scoring Frazier and McQuillan. Lady Rams, trail 5-3. I don't know if it was their second baseman that went after that, but she, she hit kind of hard there. Yes, she did. It hasn't rained for a while, so the ground is probably a little hard out there. Paige Carpenter steps in. Walters pitch to Carpenter. Ground ball into center field for a base hit. Gamby stops at second. Three of the last four batters have reached via hit. Carpenter with the single. Gamby stopped at second. So runners at first and second with two outs. Zoe Rostai to the plate. Zoe. Grounded back to the pitcher, her first at bat. Zoe's got four home runs on the season. Pitch to Rostai. High to the backstop it goes. That's going to let the runners move up. Gamby down the third. Carpenter down the second on the wild pitch. And similar to Skyly, Macy Walters has lost her touch a little bit here this inning. That's okay. <laughs> well, what? We'll take it. A little blooper to the second baseman. In comes Del Sacato to snag it. Retiring Rostai, four unassisted on the putout. In the inning, Lady Rams jump back in the game. They score two runs, score four on four hits, no errors, and two left on. Top of the fourth we go here at Jack Hewitt Field here in Buse Cyrus. The regional finals winner goes to Akron next week. Fight three on your Drop Zone Pizzeria score. We'll be back right after this time out. The law office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, it's advocacy, on, it, it and understanding. At Wiener yeah. Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle it. all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back here. 5-3, Lady Rams break back in it with two in the bottom of the third, top of the fourth, 9-1 and 2 for Johnstown. Yeah, we get sorry about our video if we don't we either we have a signal or we know nothing we can do about it. I'm using my hot spot that one went right back into the Johnstown feed you're gonna have to reset his now too because that popped that thing 
No, it still says lie, so he's good. Ours wasn't so lucky. You know what's right fielder in the game? What's that? You know what's right fielder in the game? <laughs> Strike two called. To Michaela Fain. 278 for Fain. 13 RBIs. Zolman's pitch high. Ball one. Three in the first, two in the third for their five for Johnstown. One in the first, two in the second for the Lady Rams three. Five, three. Johnstown on top here in the top of the fourth inning. That pitch was a little bit high. Two balls and two strikes to the number nine hitter, Kayla Fain. Pitch to Fain. Oh, just a bit high. Count goes full. And our stat program is froze as well here, so we got to reset that. Payoff pitch coming from Skyly Zolman to Fain. Ground ball to Tanae Smith, the third one. Hop. Tanae throws over to Carpenter to retire Fain. 5 3 on the put out. Top of the order, Aubrey Del Cicado. She is one for two. Or actually, she's, yeah, she's one for one, for one actually. She walked her last plate appearance and stole a base. Grounded to Tanae Smith to start the contest. First pitch, check swing, strike cold to Aubrey Del Cicato. Oh, one pitch, squares around the bunt. That one catches the outside corner by Skyly. Del Cicato quickly down, no balls and two strikes. One out, base is empty here in the top of the fourth, 5-3. Johnstown on top, winner. Goes to the final four. 0-2 pitch just misses. For Skyly, she got 83 pitches, 51 strikes. With one out here in the top of the fourth. Del Cicato, open stance, slaps it. Hits defense on the third base side foul. Zolman's 1 2 to Del Cicado. Ground ball to, to say a Tanae Smith at third. No chances. Oh! <laughs> Del Cicado is thrown out at first base. 5 3 on the put out. And it's probably a good thing we don't have instant replay at high school. <laughs> I think Del Cicado was probably a step over the bag by the time Carpenter actually caught the ball. So a break for the Lady Rams there. Two outs now, base is empty. Going to bring up Macy Walters. Walters struck out swinging her last plate appearance, reached on an error in the first to start the three-run rally for the Johnnies. 1-0 pitch to Walters. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Walters, player of the year in the Licking County League. Coach Mike Justice down there at third was the coach of the league. Pitch way over the head. Skyly kind of lasted herself on that one. It was such a bad pitch. Two balls and a strike. One. Her base is empty. Two outs here. 2-1 pitch. Swung on and missed. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. I stepped away for a second. She did pretty good. And as soon as I come back, she throws a crazy pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the fence. Yeah. You have to step away a little bit more often. 2-2 two, two pitch. Strike three called right down the middle. It was. Second straight time. Walters has gone down in the inning. The Johnnies go quickly. No runs, no hits, no Lady Ram errors, and nobody left on base. Bottom of the fourth we go. Johnny's of Johnstown. They have five, and the Lady Rams of Sonora, they have three. We'll be back after this brief timeout here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria Scoreboard. Fairchild Family Chiropractic is happy to announce that Dr. Kayla is now accepting new patients. Long-term wellness continues to be our goal for families of Northwest Ohio. We help you achieve this goal by working closely with you and personalizing your treatment plan based on your needs. Come see Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla at 100 Stadium Drive in Defiance or give them a call 
419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla, proud members of the Tenor Athletic Boosters, say go Rams. Back here, bottom of the fourth we go. Lady Rams trail 5-3, 7-8-9, Zolman, Norton, and Starkey to face Macy Walters. Pitches inside. Last time at the plate, Skyly was caught looking. Struck out 256 for Skyly, seven homers and 19 runs batted in. One zero pitch. Skyly, <laughs> she almost wanted to swing. She <laughs> took the best she could to hold back, and she did. Pitch was outside, two balls and no strikes. Swung on and missed. Two balls and a strike. They're gonna try and shade our hot spot. I don't know if that's gonna help or not, but like I said, all of our equipment's in the sun. Still says we're online, so hopefully we are. <laughs> a little hotter sun than it was on Wednesday. Swung and fouled right back at you. And, uh, right in your front room there by Skyly. Two balls and two strikes. Walters looks at the wristband and gets the pitcher. 2-2 pitch coming to Skyly Zolman. Swung on. High fly ball to center field. Laney Zack comes in, puts it away to retire Skyly for the first out here in the fourth. Decks up to bat. Number eight hitter, the Ram shortstop, Tegan Norton. Tegan struck out swinging in the second. Deegan had a nice district finals game against Elmwood. Oh, so she's been hitting pretty Three good. Side. She's, she's been battling oh, really good as well. Yes, she has. Swung on and missed. Eastwood. I was con confused. Eastwood and Elmwood. <laughs> <laughs> Elmwood is blue. Eastwood is red. No one pitch to Norton. Outside. One ball and one strike. 5-3. Johnny's on top of the Lady Rams here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Base is empty, one out. Tegan Norton at the play with a one ball, one strike count. Macy Walters in the circle. Her pitch coming. Swung on and missed by Tegan. One and two to the Rams junior shortstop. One, two, pitch. High, nice high by Tegan. Two balls and two strikes. Nobody on, one out here for the Lady Rams. Two, two, pitch coming from Walters to Norton. Outside corner. Strike three called. Second time Norton's Next going down. Just eight. strike out for Walters. Starkey. Here, Mickey Starkey. Starkey popped out to the first baseman, her last plate appearance. After she fouled about six or seven pitches off to stay live. This one she hits right at the first baseman. She steps on the base. Three unassisted. Rams go quickly. No runs, no hits, no Johnstown errors. Nobody left on base for Tenora. Top of the fifth we go on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard as the Johnny's five and the Lady Rams three. We'll be back right after this here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. 
Back here, top of the fifth inning, 5-3, Johnstown on top of Tenor. Keith Brown, Kaylee Runk with you on this Saturday as the temperature's getting a little warm. We're still in the shade, thank goodness. Like we said, our, first, our equipment is not. I'm trying to shade it as much as I can. I have to keep moving my drink back <laughs> yes. and everything so this doesn't get too warm. When I left home Wednesday, my entire forehead in front of my face was burnt. <laughs> For Johnstown in the inning, three, four, and five. Staff and tripled and Laney Zach to face Skyly Zolman. First pitch is a ball. For Skyly, she's got 91 pitches, 56 strikes as we hit the top of the fifth here. Check swing, stays a little bit high and away. Two balls and no strikes. To Laney Zach, Addy Zach on deck for John Soundley. Check, actually they appealed down there. Did he say... I think he thought that she swung my, that Batman across the plate, but he yes. said she did not. So it stays a ball. Two balls and no strikes. Skyly's pitch swung on and missed there. Two and one to Dakota Staffen, who hit a home run to right center field. Her last plate appearance it was her 13th on the season. Came in hitting 488. Swung on and missed there. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. And Staffen, two for two. Probably over the 500 mark as we talk. 2-2 two, two pitch coming. Fouled off first base side out of play. Thanks for joining us here on Snow Rams Live. Either watching or listening or trying to watch. We lost our signal once. So we apologize for that. What's out of our hands? I mean, neither we have cell phone service. So we don't know if your hotspot works or it doesn't. Change up, pitches fouled back. Count stays, two balls, two strikes, bases empty, nobody out, 5-3, Johnny's over the Lady Rams here in the top of the fifth inning. Middle part of the order for Johnstown, Stephen Triplett and both Zacks. Count is two balls and two strikes to Stephen. All speed pitch, a little bit low and outside, count goes full, three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Stephen steps up, step back in. 3-2 pitch coming. Drilled again. Right field. Pittman just watches that one go over the fence. Second straight home run for Staffen. That is her 14th on the season. And she now has 42. 43 actually. 43 runs back in. 6-3. Johnny's on top. And there was no doubt about that one. Opposite field home run. Now batting number seven, Addy Triplett. 202 down the line, so that's about 225 in that alley, I would guess, maybe 220. Just 202 to center here and to left field, it's 185. And they have this little mini green monster thing over there. They can't really see, but it is there. Just an extra high fence, probably 15, 20 feet high. Pitch to Triplet. There's a strike. Triplet, 518 on the season. She has scored two runs as well. Single in the first and scored, walked and scored in third. She's down two, or no balls and two strikes quickly. Zolman's pitch coming. Swung on and missed. Down goes Triplet for the first out here in the fifth. And for Skyly. Go Lady Lou! <coughs> Strikeout number five. Now, center fielder number nine, Lady Zach. That put Skyly over the 100 pitch count. 102, actually 102 now. 64 strikes for Zolman. Lady Zach. 0 for 2 with an RBI. Uh, good, uh. First pitch is a ball. Laney, 380 on the season. Skyly's pitch inside. Two balls and no strikes to Laney Zach. Addy Zach is on the on deck circle on the first base side. Pitches fouled off third base side. Paige Gabby back there to retrieve the ball. 
Base is empty, one out, 6-3. Johnny's on top as they bat here in the top of the fifth. Two one count to Laney Zach. Fouled off down the right field side. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Three more bats for Lady Rams. They trail by three. Six three here in the top of the fifth. Two two pitch. High and away. Count goes full to Laney. Three balls and two strikes. Tapper off the plate, foul. Gamey scoops it up, fires it back to Zolman. Let's do it all over again as Laney Zach steps back in the box. Payoff pitch. Swung on and missed. Back to back strikeouts for Zolman. That's out number two. Strikeout number six for Skyly. All right, Addy, your turn, babe. Now Addy Zach steps in. Addy with a double and RBI Addie. in the first. She reached on an error in the third and was caught stealing. Although during the caught stealing, throw down to second base, allowed triplet to score. First pitch hit. Shortstop side. Backhand by Norton. Fires across. Nice play there by Tegan. Backhanded in the hole on the third base side. Fired across for the out. 6-3 on that. Nice play by the Rams junior shortstop. Tegan Norton in the inning. Another run for the Johnnies. A second straight home run by Dakota Stafen. One run. One hit. No Lady Ram errors and nobody left on base. Bottom of inning five we go. Johnstown six and Snore three on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. And we'll be back after... We try to find a commercial to play. Thank you, Kay. We'll be back right after this. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 419- 576-6894. Top of or bottom of the fifth we go. Top of the lineup for the Lady Rams. Frazier, Pittman, and McQuillan to face Macy Walters. Walters has thrown just 56 pitches and she has 39 strikes. In comparison, Skyly is already over the 100 pitch mark. skyly has got 110 with 69 pitches. So basically, Walters almost owned half as many pitches as Skyly Zolman. And a half an inning less. Frazier singled and scored in the first, singled and scored in the third. First pitch to Frazier. Outside ball one, we said. And as the kind of the gas that makes the Lady Rams engine go, and that's a proven point here. As she's resulted in two of the three runs. Squares her on the bunt. Yeah. Outside corner, strike called. One ball, one strike on the Rams leadoff hitter, Anna Frazier. <coughs> Anna bats from the left side of the plate. A 1-1 one -one pitch coming from Walters. Outside, ball two, two balls and a strike. Addy Zach behind the plate for the Johnnies as Walters takes a little bit of a stroll behind the circle there. Gets back in. She's ready to go with a 2-1 pitch to Frazier. And a slaps a foul. Hits one of the solid pulls here and deflects down the first base side foul. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth. 6-3, Rams trail by three. Wallers, 2-2 two -two pitch, high and away, ball three. Aaron Pittman, and waits on deck. Three, two pitch coming to Anna, swung on, foul back, Anna stays alive. Let's go, 
Walters is back in the circle. She's ready to go. 3-2 pitch coming. Swung on and miss. Frazier goes down swinging for the first out here in the fifth. Huge out for the Walters. I say huge out. It's the first batter, but Anna, she gets on base. She just causes a whole lot of havoc. Pittman steps in. Marin struck out in the first and was caught looking on strikes in the third. First pitch to Marin. Low, ball one. Marin, 250 on the season with 16 runs batted in. Lady Rams is just the second team in school history to make it to the Elite Eight. Well, they went to state back in 2018. Made it to the semifinals. Pitch swung on and missed. Count to Marin is one ball and one strike. Logan McQuillan on deck for tomorrow. Swung on and missed. We said earlier, Walters, <laughs> she's the player of the year. And against the Fairview Apaches, who had one loss this season, she pitched a one hitter and struck out 14. Here's the one, two. That's inside. Count evens two balls and two strikes to Pittman. So Lady Rams up against probably the best pitcher they faced, including Paige Rosisa, all year, all year long. She's headed to the University of Akron, Macy Walters. Swung on and missed. Down goes Pittman. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Walters. And for her, that's strikeout number seven. Logan McQuillan. She's allowed six hits, three runs, and has not walked anybody. Here we go. Logan McQuillan, two outs. Bases empty here in the bottom of the fifth. Logan doubled and scored in the third. Hits this one second base. Del Cicado throws over to first in time to retire McQuillan. 4-3 on the putout. Rams go in order. No runs, no hits, no Johnny's errors. No Rams left on base. Top of inning number six is headed our way on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. 6-3, Johnstown leads over Tenora. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polish Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polish Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polish Salon is a proud supporter of Tadora Rams Live. Back here, Keith Brown, Kaylee Runk with you. Top of the six, we go. And I think, Kaylee, we got one of the few shade spots that's left here <laughs> in the uh, Jack Hewitt Field here. I think it's us and the announcing team behind us. It's about the I'm only okay lucky it. ones here. Yeah, I'm all right with that, too. I'm not going to complain too much. Got about another 20 minutes, I think, and then we don't have any. any <laughs> we're going to be in the cell with everybody else. <laughs> For Johnstown, 7-8-9, Yang Zura, Michelle, and Fane. First pitch is a strike to Yang Zura. Second one is fouled off. Paige comes back and says hi to everybody. Yang Zura walked her last plate appearance. She is officially 0 for 1. 3-18 on the season for Emily. Skyly's 0-2. Just a bit high. One ball and two strikes. Michelle on deck. One two pitch from Skyly is inside. Just missed. Yang Zero with a 318 average on the season. Two two pitch coming from Skyly. That one's tap foul. Back this way. Count stays two and two. Base is empty. Nobody out here. Six three. Johnstown on top. Top of the sixth inning. Two more bats for the Lady Rams. They are the home team. 2-2 two, two pitch coming. A little off-speed pitch. Tap foul first base side. Yang Zura just barely got the front of the bat on it to stay alive. Nice off-speed pitch again by Skyly. 
Swung on and missed. Yang Zura goes down swinging. First out here in the sixth. And for Skyly, her seventh strikeout. Skyly approaching 120. Pitch wise, 116, 73 strikes for Skyly. With one out here in the fifth or sixth. This one's bounced right back to her. Skyly fires over to Carpenter in time to retire Michelle. One three for the put out for the second out. Number nine hitter, Michaela Fain, going to step in. She is 0 for 2. May, uh, Fain, 278 on the season with 13 runs batted in, and she's batting actually for right fielder Katie Blackburn in the flex spot. Pitches slips out of the hand of Skyly. Skyly just a junior. Player of the year last year is a sophomore. And I think Paige Racis will probably steal it from Skyly this year. What she did in the Crescent or the uh, GMC. Assume she'll probably do that in the Crescent News as well. But Skyly still got one season left. That pitch is high. Two balls and no strikes. Lady Rams have five seniors on the team. And unfortunately, we said Devonna Holmes was injured during the preseason and basically outside of I think one or two at bats on senior night has missed the entire season. That pitch is high ball three, and Devonna was first team all GMC as a junior. Heck of a stick for Devonna that's missing right in the center of that Rams lineup. 6-3 here. That pitch is inside ball four. So the number nine hitter, Fain, with a walk, goes down to first base. Top of the lineup is Aubrey Del Cicado. She is 0 for 2 with a walk and a stolen base. The runner at first, two outs. Johnstown leads 6-3 as they bat here in the top of the sixth inning. Here in Bucyrus, winner will be in the final four. They will play on Thursday at 10 a.m. Fain, six steals on the season. Pitches outside, ball one. Runner at first is Michaela Fain. Del Cicado, second team all conference. Ground ball just outside the bag at third is makes the count even a ball and a strike. Down the line, third base line. Count even 11. Ball one strike. I think Mike's broadcasting for everybody that's sitting here, Taylor. It's like broadcasting for the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> he talks so loud. <laughs> one ball, one strike is the pitch. Just misses outside. There goes the runner. Throw down. Not in time. Stolen base by Fain. Puts her at second with two outs. So Fain with her seventh steal on the season. Coach Justice is like, hey, we're up by three. This is be aggressive. Two balls and one strike to the leadoff hitter, Del Cicado. Zolman's pitch. Check swing. Stays a bit high. Three balls and a strike. Macy Walters awaits on deck. 3-2 pitches high. Back-to-back -back walks. Puts runners at first and second. Del Cicado at first. Fain down to second. Macy Walters steps in. She reached over there in the first. Scored a run, and his, she has struck out her last two plate appearances. Walters, 420, and she was the player of the year in the conference. Foul back. <laughs> First time I flinched today. <laughs> it really wasn't close. <laughs> uh, Shane just sat there like, yeah, yeah it's no big deal. <laughs> two on, two out. No balls and one strike to Macy Walters. Pitching a little bit low in the dirt. That's going to allow the runners to move up. Down to third goes Fain. Down to second goes Del Cicado. to, or the count to Walters as a ball and a strike. 1-1 one, one pitch to Walters. Swung on and missed. Strike two on Macy Walters. Pitch 130 coming for Skyly. Fouled back. <laughs> camera. Some of the camera, not ours, but the Johnstown <laughs> feed went flying. 
two or one two is the count to Walters. Here it comes, fouled off again, first base side. Macy Walters staying alive. Dakota Stephen is on deck, and we don't want to see her anymore today. A heck of a game so far. Change up stays high. Two balls and two strikes to Macy Walters. Zolman's pitch. Ground ball to Norton. Long throw across in time to get Walters. Nice play by Tegan again. Third out in the inning. Johnstown threatens. They do not score. No runs for the Johnnies. They do not get a hit. No errors, and they leave two. Bottom of the six we go. Lady Rams trail 6-3 on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard, and we'll be back right after this time out. Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day -day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273, and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back at Jack Hewitt Field in Bucyrus. Lady Rams running out of time and out. They trail 6-3. Bottom of the six. Four, five, and six. Gamby, Carpenter, and Rostai to face Macy Walters. It's like we say, look at the comparison. Skyly's throwing 134 pitches, 81 of those strikes. And for Walters, she's almost got half as many as Skyly. Walters, 69 pitches, 47 strikes. She's allowed six hits, three runs. She struck out seven and has not allowed to walk. I'm honestly not even sure she's come close to walking anybody as she did not against Fairview as well, where she struck out 14. Walked none. That is fouled off into the arms of Coach Fairchild down there at third. Nice play by Coach. Coach Fairchild in the second year, 39 and 11 overall. 0-1 pitch coming to Gamby. Walters lets it go. Little soft liner back to Walters. She snags it for the first out. One unassisted. And Kaylee, can you give Coach Fairchild credit? Like his schedule, he schedules the big boys. <laughs> I mean, he's not going to take it easy on the girls as we've seen, especially in the last couple weeks. Played Bryan, played Edgerton, played Napoleon, played a couple other ones in there. Pitch is lined into left field for a base hit by Paige Carpenter for a one-out single. Well, those are the exact pitches that they need right now. Just base hits, get us on the bag. Don't need to try to kill the ball. Yes. Get us on so we can run. So Zoe Rostai steps in. Zoe is 0 for 2, struck out looking her last plate appearance. 310 for Zoe on the season. Four homers and 15 RBIs. We have a pinch runner for... Sonora and our favorite pinch runner steps in, Trinity Corber. Pinch runner is number four, Trinity Corber. So Corber will take over at first for Carpenter. Coach Fairchild giving some instructions to Zoe. And Zoe, she's capable of hitting that over the fence, Kaylee, as yeah, you've seen several times. Multiple times this year. She's done an amazing job. Four that. homers, 15 RBIs for Zoe. She's Zoe a, just a sophomore, yes. She's done amazing at bat this year. Yep. I mean, even when it comes just down to, I mean, base hits, I mean, she's she hits the ball pretty hard. Actually glance down, hopefully that little kid's chocolate is eaten and not just saying there, because if so, <laughs> it's no longer it's no longer a Reese's cup, it's a Reese's melted stick. <laughs> Pitch check swing. Throw down the first back just ahead of the throw is Corber. Corber has for time as the first baseman down there. Yang Zura wouldn't let her up. I mean unintentionally. She just had the tag on her the whole time. Corbin over there talking to Coach B as she lost her wristband. <laughs> Must have broke. 1-0 pitch to Zoe. Swung on and miss. Count evens. And the ball and the strike. One out. Bases. 
have one runner on. Rams trail 6-3 here in the bottom of inning number six. Walters 1-1 one, one to Rostai, fouls it off first, base side out of play. Walters ahead of Rostai, one ball and two strikes. You can do it, cut it in half. Walters 1-2 to two, Rostai, here it comes. Bit high, two balls and two strikes to Zoe. Skyly's Olden on deck. Back-to-back -back players capable of putting the Rams right back in it. They trail by three here in the sixth. 2-2 two -two pitch to Zoe. High pop foul, first base side to first baseman. Calls it out, Yank Zura, and puts it away. Retiring Rostai right in front of the Johnny's dugout. Number 24, Skyly Zolman. Second out, going to bring up Skyly Zolman. Skyly is 0 for 2. Let's go, Sky. Struck out looking in the second and hit a major league fly ball to the center fielder out there, Laney Zach, for the last to bat in the fourth. Skyly with seven home runs on the season. Pitches outside, ball one. Homer on at first, two outs now for the Lady Rams. Walters long look down at the wristband. Her 1-0 pitch coming to Skyly. Let's low. Two balls and no strikes to Skyly Zolman on deck. For Tenora is Tegan Norton. Walters pitch coming. Skyly held back. Outside three balls and no strikes. And Zach asks for time. She's going to head out and talk to Walters. One on one meeting there between Addie Zach and Macy Walters. Usually the infield joins in, but not this time. One of them said, stay put. Coach Fairchild talks to Skyly. Has a quick word for Tegan Norton as she waits on deck. Runner at first. One or two outs. 3 0 count coming from Walters to Skyly. Check swing. Ball four. They appeal down at first. The you know, first base umpire says she did not go, so that's going to put Corber at second. And Zolman at the plate. Tegan Norton struck out twice. First opportunity for Norton. Runners in scoring position here today. And first chance for Tegan, who had a heck of a year last year at the plate to get on track. First pitch swinging, foul the bag. I think last year Tegan had three or four home runs. There's about 360 on the season, a little down here for Norton, just 203 this season. Had a heck of a district though. No balls and one strike to the number eight hitter, Norton. Runners at first and second. Here comes the pitch, strike two called on Tegan, caught the outside corner. So Norton's behind, no balls and two strikes. Mickey Starkey on deck for the Lady Rams. They trail 6-3 here in the bottom of the sixth. Runners at first and second with two outs. Pitch coming from Walters. High fly ball, deep center back, goes to center fielder, Laney Zach, and caught it. I don't know if she just robbed Norton of a three-run home run, but it was darn close. She caught it right in front of that Jack Hewitt field sign out there. Norton drove it deep left center. And Laney Zach put it away for the third out. Rams threaten. They do not score. No runs. Rams had a hit. No errors. And they leave to top of the seventh we go. 6-3. John's down on top of the Lady Rams. We'll be back right after this time. Out. Fairchild Family Chiropractic is happy to announce that Dr. Kayla is now accepting new patients. Long-term wellness continues to be our goal for families of Northwest Ohio. We help you achieve this goal by working closely with you and personalizing your treatment plan based on your needs. Come see Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla at 100 Stadium Drive in Defiance or give them a call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at FairchildFamilyChiro.com. Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla, proud members of the Tenor Athletic Boosters, say go Rams. Top of the seventh we go. 
three, four, and five. Staffan Triplin and Laney Zach to face Kylie Zolman. And I, uh, I'm a little nervous right here. Kaylee's <laughs> <laughs> been on pins and needles all game. Yeah. <laughs> Thus, she do this three times. I'm about walking up and getting up and just walking away. <laughs> <laughs> But Tegan Norton put a little skip of the heartbeat and everybody here with that deep drive to left center field. First pitch to Staffen is a little bit low, understandably, because all Staffen done is score three runs, singled, and hit two solo home runs here for the Johnnies. Oh, that was a close one. Two balls and no strikes to the third baseman, Dakota Staffen. Uh, 488, she now has 14 homers and 43 runs batted in. Skyly's pitch, that one's low. Three balls and no strikes. Skyly's like, I'm not pitching to you. <laughs> I've seen enough balls head over the fence in right field today. Three zero pitch coming. Fly ball, center field. Anna Frazier puts that one away. As everybody held their breath for a split <laughs> second. <laughs> F8 to retire Stephen for the first time to tonight seven. Or this afternoon. Triplett. Addie Triplett steps in. Addie singled and scored in the first, walked in, stole the base and scored in the third, and struck out swinging in the fifth. 518 for Triplett on the season. Strike called by Skyly's own. I'll have to ask somebody here in between innings how close that was to the fence over there, but. <laughs> Laney Zach kept going and going and going. Swung on and missed, strike two. So I don't know if she robbed Tegan of a three-run home run, but it certainly looked like it was, it was headed close. that way. It was close. <laughs> oh, two pitches fouled off first base side. Missed the greenhouse. <laughs> O2 pitch. Fly ball right field. Pittman goes back, gets in position. Mirren snags it for the second out. We're for number five hitter, center fielder Laney Zach. Zach with an RBI next, sacrifice fly in the first, and she struck out her last two plate appearances. Laney 380 on the season with three homers and 22 runs batted in. Another first teamer all conference in the Licking County League. Skyly's pitch, all speed pitch stays high. One ball, no strikes, two outs, bases empty. Top of the seventh, 6 3. I don't know about you, Keith, but I don't have much shade left. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got a little square right here. <laughs> our, our sun is about gone. Well, hopefully, we can make it into the sun because that means the game lasts longer. <laughs> Pitch lined into right field. Throw in the first by Pittman. It's not in time. So Zach with an opposite field single with two outs puts her at first. Here for number six hitter, Addy Zach. Zach with a RBI double in the first. Reached on an error in the third where she was caught stealing, which actually resulted in a run for the Johnnies. And she grounded out to Tegan Norton in the fifth, who Tegan made a heck of a backhanded play there. She can play her sister. Eddie's ad asks ask for time. She's going to go down and talk to head coach Mike Justice down there at third. Conversation over. Eddie's at. Back in the plate. Bats from the right side. First pitch coming from Skyly. Maybe. <laughs> the umpire get ready uh, he's still ask for time now we're ready to go Skyly's pitch is high one ball no strikes to Addie Zach Laney on it first with a two out single one oh pitch coming ground ball McQuillan in second has the ball go underneath her glove into right field Frazier out there, fires it in, not in time. Laney Zach all the way to third. Addie Zach on it first. 
That was a difficult play by Logan. She was in position, just had the ball go underneath her glove. Runners at the corners with two outs now. Emily Yankzura steps in. So Yankzura, 318, she is 0 for 2 with a walk. She walked in the third. Rams can all afford to give up any runs, trailing 6-3 here in the top of the seventh. Rams in the lead eight for this the second time. Pitch inside, just misses the corner. One ball and no strikes. It's like listening to a football quarterback, <laughs> Coach Justice Teller, been shouting numbers all game. That pitch is high and away. Two balls and no strikes. Like a quarterback under center. <laughs> Red 19, black 13. <laughs> Post batter on this one. 2 hole pitch coming. Fly ball. Center field. Frazier comes in a couple steps and puts it away for the third out in the inning. Johnstone threatens. They do not score. No runs for the Johnnies. One hit and one Lady Ram error. Two left on base. Last chance for the Lady Rams coming up. Bottom of the seventh we go. They trail 6-3. We'll be back on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard right after this time. Out. The Law Office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Bottom of the seventh we go. Starkey, Frazier, and Pittman to face Macy Walters. He says in comparison to pitches, pitches so far, Walters, 82 pitches, 55 strikes. Six innings, seven hits, three runs, both earned. She struck out seven and she has walked one. And for Skyly, Skyly has thrown 150 pitches with 90 strikes. So Macy Walters with probably half as many pitches as Skyly. Starkey, then the top. Starkey's had some good at bats. She's 0 for 2. She popped out and grounded out to the first baseman. And we first this inning for Tenor is number eight, Mickey Starkey. But key is to get Starkey on somehow and bring up Van Frazier than the rest. Rams trail 6-3 here. In the Elite Eight here in the regional finals in Region 10 here in Bucyrus. Starkey, 267 on the season. First pitch by Walters, swung on and missed by Starkey. So the winner will play Thursday at 10 a.m. in Akron. Oh, one pitch, strike two called on the outside corner. Starkey, quickly now, no balls and two strikes. Macy Walters, pitch way outside. Addie Zach reaches out there to snag it before it smashes into the backstop here and upsets the Johnny's game streamer over here. One, two, pitch coming. Strike three called. Starkey goes down looking for the first out here in the seventh. Top of the lineup, Anna Frazier. Anna's got two singles and two runs scored. She struck out her last at bat in the fifth. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. Keith and Kaylee here on this Saturday. Frazier takes it, misses outside. Ball one, Anna, 5.05 on the season. 30 stolen bases. Next pitch coming up. And a slaps it just foul down the right field side or the left field side. Oh, 
One run, the count is just a long strike. One ball, one strike. One ball, one strike, one out. Base is empty here. Bottom of the seventh. Six, three, Johnny's. They scored three runs in the first, two in the third, and one in the fifth. One, one pitch. Frazier squares around the button. Pitches outside. Two balls and a strike to Anna. Rams with a run in the first, two runs in the third, and last inning had a golden opportunity. 2-1 pitch coming. Frazier swings and misses. Two balls and two strikes where Tegan Norton hit one all the way to the fence, and Laney Zach snagged it to save at least two, if not three, runs. 2-2 two -two pitch to Frazier. Check swing, a bit high and away. Count goes full. Three and two on deck is Marin Pittman. Frazier ready. 3-2 pitch by Walters. Anna fouls it off to stay alive. Three and two. Bases empty. One out here in the seventh. Rams need three to tie. Three two pitch from Walters to Frazier. Just a bit inside. Frazier with a one out walk. And it goes down the first. That'll bring up Marin Pittman. Pittman has struck out three straight times. Two swinging and one looking. Marin, 250 on the season. No homers, 16 runs batted in. I don't know if you want Anna stealing when you're down by three. I'm assuming Coach Fairchild's going to put the brakes on Anna. We'll see why they play the game. Walters pitch to Pittman is outside. Addie Zach way outside to snag that one. One out, bottom of the seventh. Rams need three or more to stay alive. 1-0 pitch to Pittman. Swung on and missed. Count to Marin as a ball and a strike. Logan McQuillan on deck for the Lady Rams. Logan, 495 on the season. Frazier at first. Walters gets a little bit of dirt. Throws it back down for the Johnnies. Gets back in the circle, looks at the wristband. Long look at the wristband. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Marin. Outside ball two, two balls and a strike to the Rams right fielder, <coughs> senior Marin Pittman. Pittman, one of the five seniors on the Lady Rams team. 2-1 count. Here comes a pitch from Walters. Swung on and missed. Two balls and two strikes. Frazier dies back in the first ahead of the throw. Two balls and two strikes to Marin Pittman. Frazier at first. Here it comes. Yes! Drive into right field. Yeah! Out there is Blackburn to put it away. F9 for the second out. Rams down to their final out. Logan McQuillan steps in. Logan with a double and a run scored in the third. She is one for three. Rams down to their final out. Frazier at first. First pitch to McQuillan. All speed pitch stays outside. One ball and no strikes to Logan. Paige Gamby on deck. The Rams need a runner to get Paige to the plate. Trailing by three. Pitch is fouled back. One ball and one strike to Logan McQuillan. Frazier at first. McQuillan at the dish. The Rams trail 6-3 here in the bottom of the seventh. One-one pitch. That's low. Ball's blocked. Throw down. Frazier with a head first dive. And it goes down to second on the wild pitch. Two balls and a strike to McQuillan. And it just had to get dirty one, one last time. <laughs> two-one pitch to Logan. Swung on, fouled back. Two balls and two strikes. Johnny's 6-3 lead. Frazier at second with two outs. McQuillan lit the dish. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah. 
Walters, 2-2 pitch coming to McQuillan. Swung on and miss. McQuillan goes down on strikes. In the inning, no runs, one hit, no errors, one left on base. Final here from Bucyrus. Johnstown six and the Tenor Rams three. Johnny's will move on to the final four in Akron. They will play next Thursday at 10 a.m. Lady Rams fall to 21 and eight. See their season in and the Johnny season continues at 27 and two. Stay tuned, we'll have the Bidlack Insurance and Investment Show coming up. And we will do it right after this timeout here on Toronto Rams Live. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Back here, we'll t- turn things over to the PA where they'll give the Rams their regional runner-up trophy. Exciting game. It is now my pleasure to present to you the 2023 OHSAA Division III Regional Softball Championship Awards. First, we will recognize the 2023 OHSAA Division III Regional Runner-Up Team, the Tenora High School Rams. Presenting the Regional Runner-Up Trophy is B. Cyrus Athletic Director Matt McKeever. Now would head coach Tony Fairchild and the Rams, seniors and captains, please come forward to receive your trophy. Congratulations on your outstanding season. And now we will recognize the 2023 OHSAA Division III Regional Championship team, the Johnstown High School Johnnies. Presenting the regional trophy is Big Cyrus Athletic Director Matt McKeever. Now would head coach Mike Justice and the Johnstown Seniors Captains please come forward to receive your trophy. Yeah. Once again, congratulations to the Johnstown High School Johnnies who will now advance to the state semifinal on June 1st at 10 a.m. at Akron Firestone Stadium. On behalf of the staff of Bucyrus High School and the Ohio High School Athletic Association, thank you for attending today's event, and please drive safely and make sure your way home is safe. Welcome to the Bidlack Insurance and Investments post-game show. Keith Brown and Kaylee Ruck with you on this Saturday. See the Lady Rams make it to the final eight and fall just short, losing 6-3 to three to a very talented Johnstown Johnny team who improved to 27-2. and two. In the first inning, Johnstown with three runs with we talked about in the pregame and right before the game started defensively the Rams needed probably one of their better games and it didn't start out so well a couple errors in the first inning allowed Johnstown to get three runs in the first on three hits yeah two Ram errors and he left one Johnstown came back with two runs in the third and another run in the fifth and a heck of a game by the third baseman for Johnstown Dakota Stafen she scored three runs hit two solo home runs and one of them I think is still going out there in right field <laughs> and the Rams Came back and scored a run in the first on Anna Frazier. Single and run scored over by Paige Gamby in the third. Rams scored two runs on four hits. And the biggest, probably the biggest play was in the sixth inning. Rams had two runners on and shortstop Tegan Norton sent a deep drive out there to left center field. 
And center fielder Laney Zach was, seemed like she was right at the fence to put it away. Now, whether or not that would have been a home run, I don't know. Where we're setting, we can't have the angle. But regardless, had Zach not been over there, that would have at least scored two for sure, if not taking a three-run homer away from uh, Tegan Norton. So, Kaylee, great game by the Lady Rams. Nothing to be disappointed about. You make it to the... Elite Eight, you're one of the eight teams left in the entire state in Division Three. It's sad. Season's over, but when the girls look back on it, um, quite an accomplishment here. So, yeah, I mean, they can't. I mean, I mean, looking at like how the beginning of the season went, and then coming like to ta like how we ended it. I mean, I never would have. To be honest, I probably wouldn't have said that this is how it was going to turn out. But they, I mean, they worked on the issues that they were having, and they were able to turn it around. I mean, the big thing that they just, I mean. Us sitting here, like from a standpoint, is just bats. I mean, yep. playing a team like this, like you have to be aggressive at the plate, yep. and then same in the field, like you have to. You, I mean, you have to make those basic plays, good throws, good mm -hmm. fielding. I mean, they're an aggressive team. It's Very. just something that you have to be good. I mean, be perfect on almost. Yes. And that's. I mean, we like I said, we had a couple hiccups with that, and I mean, ultimately, I mean, it's is what it is. But I mean, I think. I mean, going into the whole season, as if mm -hmm. I mean, throughout the season, they've definitely improved and they've done an amazing yep. job this year. No doubt. Look at the line score. Six runs, seven hits, no errors, which is probably the biggest uh, thing right there for Johnstown. You look at the Rams. Three runs, seven hits. So they both had, both amount, had the same amount of hits. The uh, biggest thing is four errors for the Rams. And uh, like you said, the first inning was probably the biggest hiccup, um, which allowed three runs for the Johnnies to score. And the Rams answered with one. Uh, Johnstown took a 5-1 lead. Rams rallied back with three to cut it to 5-3. And another second home run off the bat of Stephen made it 6-3. But that deep drive by Tegan Norton in the gap there. Never know. May have been, may have not been. But for the senior team for the Lady Rams, Anna Frazier, Paige Carpenter, Logan McQuillan, Devonna Holmes, who missed the entire season outside of a lot. Two at bats, I think she got on yep. senior night. Yep. And she laced one into the gap. So Devonna, even though was unable to play in the the one at bat that she did get, she laced one in the gap to right field, I think. And finally, Marin Pittman. So that Ram senior class of Anna Frazier, Paige Carpenter, Logan McQuillan, Devonna Holmes, and Marin Pittman. Thank you for everything you've done from all the way up, all the way through T-ball and junior high and high school softball. Again, you're one of two teams to make it into this deep into the Elite Eight in the you know, uh, OHSSA uh, softball playoff. So again, yeah, it's sad. Season's over, but as the girls look back on it when they all get together for the reunions. They're gonna have, they're not gonna remember this game or a certain play here or there. Maybe they'll remember, but they'll just remember the fun they had going out to eat, bus rides to and from. I mean, uh, just just little things like that will stand out I, yeah. for the Lady Rams. So again, great job this season by Kaylee taking the over softball. She did a great job. Like I said, when I was writing the post game articles for the boys and girls, and even track sometimes writing three articles in one night for the website, I'd flip on the softball game that I missed and, and then listen to Kaylee. She did an A++ job for never being behind the mic ever. <laughs> I mean, hey, Kaylee, you want to do softball? Sure. Hey, you need help? Absolutely, I'll help. And she did a great job. And as the season went on, she was a professional. So... Thank you, thank you very much, Kaylee, for helping out. Uh, appreciate it very much. So, you're welcome. And, I enjoyed and it. You can come back next season if you're if you're willing. <laughs> yeah, Skyly will be here, so I'll be yeah, here. Yeah, so you'll, you'll have Kaylee next year as well. Um, but again, fantastic season for Coach Fairchild and the Lady Rams, and again, fantastic senior class: uh, Frazier, Carpenter, McQuillan, Devonna Holmes, and Skyly Zolman. So. For Kaylee Ronk, Keith Brown saying so long on this 2023 sports season's final broadcast, actually, for any sport. So it's a. Uh I've yeah, had a great time. So hopefully everybody out there enjoyed watching and listening throughout the season. And we'll be back uh, in the fall for football. So 
Um, again, thanks. Thank you very much, Kaylee. So thank our sponsors, uh, BSN Sports, Weber Bookkeeping, Valley Valley Title Agency, Clubhouse Pizza and Nay, Fairchild Family Chiropractic Center, Optimal Performance and Fitness, Drop Zone Pizzeria, Higby Embroidery, Signs Excavating, Firestone Tavern, Oklahoma Tavern, Northwest Ohio Sports, Bat and Stevens Body Shop, the Toronto Rams Athletic Boosters, Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon, uh, Wooden Indian Pawn Shop, Midlack Insurance and Financial Services, Wiener Hill, Weber and Stanley Attorneys at Law, Postum Insurance and Financial Services, and finally, Mayfield Engineer Corporation starts your Met career today, $1,000 sign-on bonus. Go to metcareers.com. So, any final words, Kaylee, for everybody out there in Tenor land? No, 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 I mean, not, not too many. I mean, they did. They had an amazing season this year, so can't wait to see what they have in store for them next year with losing five seniors, and hopefully we can make it this far next year, yes. if not further. Absolutely. It's always the goal is to aim high. Yep. So, again, fantastic season by Coach Fairchild and the Lady Rams. Uh, they fall here 6-3, and they were one of the final eight teams left in Division Three. So best of luck for to the coach, uh, Mike Justice, and the Johnstown Johnnies as they will play at 10 a.m. on Thursday in Akron. So for everybody out there from Johnstown, we wish the best to the Johnnies. So for Keith Brown, Kaylee Runk saying, for the final time here in the 2023 calendar sports season for the Tenora High School. Have a fantastic weekend and enjoy your Memorial Day and make sure you salute and honor one of the fallen soldiers if you know any of their family members. So that's what it's all about on Memorial Day on Monday. So have a good day everybody. We'll see everybody next season. Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenora Rams Sports. Be sure to tune in next time when we bring you more Rams action and follow us online at TenoraRamsSportsAudio.com or on Twitter at Tenora Rams Audio.